The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the April 26th, otherwise known as the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us. Not to us. That's right. We need to make that one little two by four shift. It means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tigers. Did, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday Force. This is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, I get all the U.S. indices trading to the downside. A bloodbath out here. You've got the Dow off 519, S&P 75, NASDAQ 376, Russell's down 38, semis are off about 100, Tranny's down 307, New York Stock Exchange off about 200, gold's up 9 bucks, 1905 is the print, silver's off 9 cents, lights we crude up 378, 10231 is the print there, natural gas is up 29 cents, he's trading at 696, and a 30 year treasury up nearly 1.1. 42 is uh, and 16 30 seconds is its print arch resource is a leader out there dollar wise the upside 28 bucks sherwin williams 23 bucks paid in the town green that's nine and a half percent roper technology 16 bucks alpha metallurgical resources up 14 bucks and whirlpool up nine the downside is amazon up 180 bucks about three and seven tenths percent tesla up 105 11 percent chipotle 78 five percent google's off 69 three percent booking holdings 50 buckaroonies and that's off two and a half percent out there so i want to look at folks what you want to look at I do have one request in. We'll hold off on that just for a moment. Let's go take a look at what's going on inside the markets. I think just simply here, what we're going to do is just take a look at the NQ. We'll take a look at my, uh, my more of my shorter term time frame set of tools out here. Now, we do have the daily. That's in the upper left-hand uh, corner. You can see that price that we're trading below, the low of yesterday. Uh, that's suggesting to we're trading below right now. It's TD9 count breakout level daily time frame that's at the 13 4, 17 level that suggests we get back and we test the lows of was this march march, I think should, march 15th uh is the low let me give you that number here that number is uh 12 9 now it could take that level out if it doesn't we would have an a to b equals cd to the downside we could have even a consolidation measured move break. But right now, that's what the uh, daily time frame is indicating to you and I. The five-hour time frame is indicating the same thing. Now, this bar here completes at 2 p.m. Let me just make sure of that. Yes, correct. 2 p.m. And if we do get a close below the low of uh, 13,184, even, Stephen, we're at 13,148. We had a close below 13,184. A TD9 count will have been negated. That says uh, we had lower. That's what its signal would be. No bottom signal on the two-hour time frame chart. No bottom signal on the 60-minute time frame chart. No bottom signal on the 30-minute chart, although I take that back. You could easily, we've got an A to B equals CD to the downside. But price is going to need to close above 13,254 to um, you know, suggest there's something there. Right now, you're below the oscillator and change line. It's red, so that's not good. So yeah, I'm not seeing any kind of a bottom pattern, per se, or anything to suggest that the markets are going to do anything right now other than head lower we would 
change our opinion if Price could take out 13 275 you get about 13 275 and then there's something else going on more of a rally but right now that's not the parameters that we're looking at just simply so just simply something for you to note on your pad of paper to keep track of in case that happens but at this stage here it looks more like we're headed to the downside let's go take a look at the es mini take a look at these two now this one here will go back to just the normal set of uh, eight panel charts monthly weekly monthly's got a td9 count top suggest price you get to 3720 Weekly has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Price has already gotten to 41.2675. If price closes below that, that's how we know we're getting down to the 37.20 level. You've got the ES Mini, and that is trading below the uh, 42.39 level. That's the breakout area. And if price closes below that, that suggests we get down to the uh, lows out here of uh, February. Yeah, February 24th slow, and that's in the price range of about 40.94 out there. So watch the 42.39 level today. By the way, on the NQ, I just want to share with subscribers out there. So if you're not a subscriber, close your ears. And that is that the, new, the profile that we were looking at this morning is not there right now. So, um, you know, that, that, that appears like that may not form come the end of the day. Back to the ES Mini out here. Uh, I don't have any kind of bottom signal on the 30-minute time frame chart nor on the 60-minute the 120 minute is testing a prior Rose Mintum indicator bottom. So that uh, is there. And uh, in the five hour chart, so I'd say the five hour chart, which also this bar here closes at 2 p.m., a close below 42.18.50. We're at 42.14 right now. We'll negate the TD9 count, and that would then suggest that we head to those February 24th lows out there so i think it's pretty easy just to uh, focus on the nq and the es mini watch those five hour time frame charts watch those levels that we took a look at you close below them that's a pretty decent signal that the markets will continue to head lower out there we got about a minute here before we go to a, a break uh, hector wanted to take a look at the energy sector hector and patty so we're going to switch over to that and then we'll actually read hector and patty's question out here so give me a moment. Uh, I think we're going to, I think I have it set up. Let's see, do we, Stevie? Come on, where'd you put it? Here we go. So Hector and Patty write in, and Hector and Patty write in and say, happy Taco Tuesday, back at you. Although I think today, just might go over to the beach club and have uh, some scallops or something. But we'll consider a happy diet. You know, I'll have a Corona with that. There we go. Uh, the XLE is on the ropes, but still holding up. Thoughts on the weekly OUL support and resistance? And the second question is global capital fleeing to American banks. So two different questions, one about the energy sector, the next about the financial sector. With regard to the energy sector, longer term, when I say longer term, I'm referring to the monthly time frame chart. The monthly time frame chart most certainly ran into resistance. That's at 79.11. If price is able to close above 79.11, that's going to suggest that we run all the way back to the July 2014 highs out there. There's no topping signal, but sometimes just getting back to a breakdown level is all that you need. So the key area to be watching, Nectar and Patty, is 79.11. That's coming from the monthly time frame chart. And what we'll do here, because I hear music in the ears, the weekly chart has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top out here, but as Hector and Patty pointed out, it's holding up pretty well. Why is it holding up pretty well? Because price is still above the top of its profile, which is 70.50. When we get back to this break, we're going to go finish answering Hector and Patty's questions. Of course, folks, I would love to hear from you as well. Steve at TFNN.com. See you in a few. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, Education. Investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the energy sector, the XLE. We know on a monthly basis, ran into support. 79.11 is the key number there. We're talking about the weekly time frame as we went to the break. Last week, we generated or it generated a bearish engulfing candle. Um, that confirms Rhodes Mintum Indicator top, the price above the top of its bearish structured uh, weekly profile. The key level of support here, quite frankly, would be 66.02. But price above 70.50, the top of the profile. So we've got a neutral signal there. Somewhat neutral in the uh, monthly time frame. We do not have, we do not, we do not, or do not have a neutral signal when it comes to the daily time frame. The daily time frame forms a road momentum indicator top. Does that a couple of days ago. And then yesterday we gapped down, or it gaps down below its breakout level of support, Hector, at 75.34, below the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile. If today closes below 75.58, that would be two consecutive. Is that correct? Let me just make sure. I think it is. 75.58. Yeah. If we close below 75.58, we're at 75.47 right now. Then you'd have two consecutive days below the bottom of bull structured profile. Could actually be setting up the C point of an A to B equals CD to the downside. Could be. Don't know if it is, but could be. And that would then take us into the 67.26-ish area out here. So was holding on until yesterday. Now, because it's only one day, Hector, below the bottom of the daily profile, we have that two-day rule. The two-day rule would say if you do close below it, then a counter trend move would find resistance at about 76.23, the center of that bullish structure profile. But if price can close back above the bottom of that daily profile, 75.58, then yesterday could be considered a false breakdown. So we really won't know, Hector, until we see where traders price this at the close today. But that's a daily time frame chart. So let's see what else we have out here. We take a look at the intraday time frame charts, for example, the 195. Don't have anything out here that shows a uh, bottom other than price holding this breakout level support of 72.31. Oscillator and change line recently changed colors. Looks like that test is basically about done. That's a bearish test. Um, Nothing that I see on the 130-minute chart, no bottom signal on the 65, nor on the 30. 
And I'm not going to worry about the 15, which didn't have roads meant to mitigate her bottom. Price ran into resistance sector at 76.84. The TD9 count breakdown level. So for the day, you can watch 76.84. If price gets above it, we should see a further rally, 77.17 and above that. Then we can get up into uh, higher levels. Um, but that's what I see when I take a look at the energy sector. So I don't think we have enough information um, until uh, we see how the day closes. So I hope that that helps you out. You had another question, which was about capital fleeing to the U.S. You said it's capital fleeing to the American banks out here. So to do that signal, let's do this here. Let's change screens. If you give me a moment, we'll do that. We'll get to the black background screens momentarily. And... Uh, you know, here's what we know about the XL left. Yesterday was a very positive message. What do you mean, Steve-O? Well, the XLF actually tested its swing point for March the 8th. That's a, let me just expand out the daily time frame chart out here. That's its swing low that is in question out here. To a certain extent, yeah, you almost have a three drive to a bottom, but not, not enough of a third drive just yet to get there. But here's the deal. Yesterday, tested and rejected the swing point for March 8th. That swing point for March 8th did volume of 115 million shares. Yesterday, that was tested with 91 million shares. So you have one of the sectors inside the S&P 500 that has rejected price. Now, if you close below 35.49 today, even if it's on lighter volume, that would be a, uh, that would say, well, yesterday's signal may have been a false signal out there. It would say that you could head lower. The head lower, head lower to where? Good question. Um, you bring up this next set of swing points, which take you back into the July 2021 area down into about the 3490. But right now, this is held, support is held, which was a retest, which was a test of that swing point. The weekly chart says, you know, guys, gals out here, I'm trading below trend line. I'm trading below the bottom of its profile. And if I close below 3608 at the end of the week, odds favor that I want to go make a move to 3336. So right now, the XLF looks good. Is money flowing into the banks, um, global capital-wise? Well, here's what the global it, – it's hard to say. Um, it's hard for Stevie to say out there. Here's what we do know, and this is the chart here that is perhaps the most important, Tector. And that is if we take a look at the euro. Now, this is a line chart. That means we're only looking at closing prices. And on a closing basis, if price the euro, that is, were to close below 1.051 – there's nothing to stop the euro from getting all the way back. Now, there's no base. There's no nothing, no swing points, nothing of significance. Uh, and that would suggest that price would move all the way back down to the 2,000 lows um, and actually get below par out there. And if that happens, you can see how close that we are right now. If that does happen, Hector, then we're likely to see euros flowing to the U.S. And the U.S. being U.S. dollars, U.S. stock market out there. Um, things of that sort. So we're getting pretty close. I guess that what that really means is that since you asked that question, we should go take a look at the euro, right? I mean, we're looking at it here, but shouldn't we take a look at it a little bit more in depth and try to understand what its uh, message is for you and I? So let me see if I have those charts here. I believe I do. And let's go uh, switch screens here. We're going to go to an eight panel screen to understand what the euro is communicating to us, because it's going to help Patter, Patty. It's going to help Hector, Patty and Stevie, as well as you help understand where the global flow of capital may come. So now that we've got the uh, eight panel chart, we can see on a monthly basis, nice TD9 count on top at this month, the month of uh, April is going to become bar number nine. Price is making its way through a breakout level onto its next level. That's at the 1.0. 049 area. So you'd say that a close below 1.049, remember I had the 1.05 because we're looking at a line chart out there. A close below 1.049 odds favor that we start to see that uh, big move to the downside. Now remember on a TD9 count, it can bottom on bars number eight, nine, but it could also bottom on the bar following nine. So it could be that the euro puts in some type of nice bottom. It could be this month. But more likely than not, it would be during the month of May. The weekly chart here supports that. What do you mean, Stevo? There's no bottoming signal. There is a roads momentum indicator signal that's been triggered, but needs a bullish reversal candle. Price below the oscillator and change line looks like the euro wants lower price. Below the red oscillator and change line on the uh, daily time frame, no bottoming signal. 
price wants to head lower. I see a 60-minute TD9 count bottom, but that red oscillator and change line continues to act as resistance. A 240-minute TD9 count out there, but price is below support. It's red oscillator and change line. That may be where price bounces up to, but the euro is looking like it wants lower price. And that's specifically coming from the daily and the weekly time frame, as well as really the monthly by breaking through its TD9 count breakout level at the 1.07 area. So Hector, this is this and Hector and Patty, these are really the areas that we want to watch because I do believe if we get below this, let's just call it now 1.0494 out there, we're likely to see a waterfall move to the downside. That could be a slingshot move to the upside in the U.S. stock market. So hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the questions and have a, a terrific Tuesday, a Taco Tuesday to both you and Patty. Next question that's coming in is from uh, David in uh, Panama City. And David says, uh, give me your perspective on LAM Research. You've got the 500 calls expiring this Friday. Ticker symbol there, folks, is LRCX. We're going to take a look at that when we get back from the break in case you want to make your own assessment and see how it matches up with the uh, charts that we're going to go take a look at. Hope you're right. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, folks. So we take a look at LAM research out here. We've got our eight panel set of charts out here. You know, uh, what sticks out to me, David, 
is a 195-minute time frame chart. 195-minute chart, I'm just going to expand this out. You're asking, will this get back to 500 out here? And it already gave you that gift. Uh, what we had out here is a TD9 count bottom that took place at 1245. This was on the 18th of uh, April. Yeah, the 18th of April. And then at uh, 1245 on the 20th of April, two days later, price gets up that 498.27 level. That was a TD9 count breakdown area. And then it's since pulled back. Now, there's a new profile that is formed. It is bearish and structured on this time frame, 195-minute chart. As long as price is able to hold the bottom of that profile, which is at 463.69 level, you could see move to 481.97. 491.10 or 498.27. Man, if you could get up to that 491.10 area out there, I'd probably go ahead and cash it on in. Uh, but that's what the 195 minute time frame chart is telling us. The daily chart doesn't have anything good out here. You've got a negated TD9 count bottom. That was negated back on April the 14th out there. Price is now just consolidating with inside its daily profile. So you want the bottom of that to hold. That is at 462.55. Resistance there is at 485.66. That's on the daily time frame. So there it says, hey, if you get up to 485, go ahead and uh, cash that out. But I don't have any indication that that's what price is going to do. Now, if we look at the real short-term time frame charts out here, the 30-minute has confirmed a road's momentum indicator bottom. Price is just consolidating with inside its profile. What you need to see there, David, is a move above 469.48. That's the top of the 30-minute profile. If you do that, if it does that, then you might get up to that 486 level, maybe even 500. 0.88. That's the TD9 count breakdown area in that bottom left-hand chart. That's the 130-minute time frame chart out there. Um, so I'm pulling for you, but um, it's not looking great. But here's the deal. The deal is you got the bottom of the weekly a daily profile that is held, the 195-minute profile is held. You've got a bottom signal on the 30-minute, so maybe you're going to get a bit of a bounce here. But uh, that's all that it looks like at this moment in time. And quite frankly, the monthly charts, the weekly charts look pretty bad. The weekly chart, if we, it's got no bottoming signal. It's trading below its second breakout level, which is at the 473 area. This suggests that Lamb Research could get down to the 332 area out here. That would be its next level of support to go target. And on a monthly time frame with the Rhodes Mintum indicator top and trading below the bottom of its profile, 267 is a possibility as well. So David H. in Panama City, thanks much for writing in. I do hope that that helps you out and have a uh, terrific Tuesday. We did have a couple of questions that came in uh, from the uh, Tiger's Den. And uh, so there were two of them. AVGO is one, which I'm going to get fired up on my charts here. And we're going to go ahead and change screens because the second one was uh, Valero. VLO is a ticker symbol. In the case of Valero, what the request was, was just for let's get it up here was just for the uh, profile levels i believe that was for mr bill and uh, mr bill if there's something else you need uh, please please uh, go ahead and retype that in here in the uh, main chat room and I'll, I'll certainly provide that to you but right now you've got uh, prices trading right up into resistance mr bill that's the top of its daily profile and that's at 105.82 we're trading at 105.75 so we've traded above that today but uh, right now, you know, it's trading right. In, and that's the only level of resistance that you have on Valero uh, because price from a profile standpoint, because price is trading above the top of the weekly and the monthly profile. So just the daily that you're dealing with. Now, what Valero also did today was it tagged the low of its April 19th swing point. That April 19th swing point had 5.1 million shares. You have tested that today with 4.2 million shares at 134. So you're moving into a swing point with volume. Even if price closes below 107.38, odds favor price will be back up there because you're testing that swing point with volume. Maybe it's even going to go ahead and take that out. Uh, is there anything else that I can provide to Mr. Bill? I don't think so. I think that's all that you were looking for. But again, as I said, if you if you need something else, uh, please let me know, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, the next question was to take a look at uh, Avgo, A V G O. So for that, we're going to go ahead and switch screens out there. We've got the white background screens populated with its signals. And as we take a look at Avgo, that is Broadcom. We can see that on a uh, monthly basis, you've got a TD nine count top. Price now below its oscillator and change line. That suggests that over time, price wants to get to the 522.477 level. The weekly chart for Broadcom, what does that show us? The weekly chart shows us what? 
Wave number seven, that's letter G. So you got the seventh inning stretch. Price is below the bottom of its profile. Very likely price is going to go target the, tw- the June area, and that's in the 513 range. That's the weekly community uh, chart. The daily time frame chart for Broadcom tells us what? Tells us that price is negating a TD nine count bottom as we speak. So if ABGO closes below the bar following bar number nine, that's low of the pattern, that's at 572.86, that's from April the 14th, that's going to suggest, well, you could even have an A to B equal CD to the downside. So what Stevie needs to do here, I'll leave the white background charts up, but let me go take a look at the volume matrix on the black background charts and see if ABGO, Broadcom, is in fact taking out a swing point. So the swing point that you and I were taking a look at, the actual swing is... 572.85, 418. Volume there was 2.1 million shares. You're already into it with 1.5. So it appears that what you're going to get in Broadcom today, it appears that way. We won't know till the end of the day and it's close. Uh, but you may be getting a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. Your initial price projection there would be 543. That would be the one-to-one level. And at 523, you'd be at the 1.272 expansion. So the monthly says I want lower price. The weekly says I want lower price. The daily is now giving you that signal I want lower price. The 195, the same thing out here. Uh, you do have a TD9 count bottom that's going to complete on the 130-minute time frame. The same thing on the 30-minute or so it appears. But uh, bigger term, longer term, bigger picture out there. It looks like Broadcom wants to actually head lower. So I apologize. I don't recall who asked for that inside the Tiger's Den. But um, hopefully that answers all of your questions. SNP wants to take a look at uh, Cliff's Natural Resources. I believe that's what it is. CLF is a ticker symbol. So we're going to go ahead and let this uh, populate out there. I'll get this going on my... My other screen's out here just so I can give you a little bit of narration while this is updating itself. So this is Cle Cleveland Cliffs, not Cliffs Natural Resources, Cleveland Cliffs, which right now is trading into the bottom of its daily profile. And the bottom of that profile is priced at 2721. You're 2707 out there. You are trading into the center of its weekly profile. You're below the oscillator and change line, and you've got a TD nine count top. So this suggests that price wants to make its way to 2261. Price is trading above the top of its profile. Uh, but you may get a roads momentum indicator signal this month. That would suggest to move into the 2402-ish type area out there. So the monthly is looking like it may want lower price. The so weekly, uh, the same thing. The daily uh, says I need to bust out my TD9 count support level. That's at 2618. And that's what was tested yesterday. So if price could hold 2618, um, maybe what you're setting up is some type of a consolidation pattern out here. Uh, if price gets below 2618, then you could be looking at a move to the 1771. 1771 is a breakout level or the next breakout level for the daily time frame, and it's the breakout level for the weekly time frame. So uh, CLF, Cleveland Cliffs, is near the cliff. And that cliff happens to be $26.18. You close below that, and you're headed south. Be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go to our question. Another question coming in here from the uh, email. This is coming in from Mimi. Mimi, nice to hear from you. Thanks so much for taking the time to write. Where do you see interest rates by the end of 2022 out there? A bank is offering a 10-month CD at 1.1 interest, thinking of putting some money in it. As banks may or may not raise interest rates soon after the Fed does, what are your thoughts? Well, with regard to answering where interest rates might go, but the only thing that I can do is take a look at the charts out here. And so let's look at the 30-year rate. 30-year rate right now is printing off at 2.85% uh, TYX. That's the 30-year, isn't it? Yeah, let me make sure. Let me just make sure TYX. I'm pretty sure that's the 30-year uh, rate out there. But just let me... Let's let me double check out there. Yeah, that's the 30 year Treasury yield. So uh, that is likely going to target. So what uh, we're looking at a monthly chart and on a monthly basis, price is taking out a TD nine count top. That was from March of 2021. So its next level of resistance is three point one two nine percent out there. If price is able to clear that level. That's a TD9 count breakdown area. Then price should go target the next TD9 count breakdown level, and that'd be 3.967. So that's what the 30-year Treasury is communicating to us for its monthly time frame. The weekly time frame says what? The weekly time frame shows um, shows that price is running into resistance at a TD9 count breakdown level. That's at 2.91%. That's been where we've seen resistance. So if you see a close above 2.91%, then the figures that we looked at on a monthly basis will start to come to fruition. No topping pattern as we speak just yet. Um, you could get a TD9 count pattern, but that would likely have to take place next week or the week after. Uh, right now, it's bar number seven. That's the high. So that does not validate a pattern, whereas the daily does have a TD9 count top. And this suggests that rate should actually move lower, move lower to where? Well, the price target should be 2.5%. That's a TD9 count breakout level. Now, this is, um, we, we can't pay attention to the, I mean, you could pay attention to it if you want, but the task market profiles that show up on here are not accurate with regard to this specific instrument. But right now, you've got a valid TD9 count top, and my level of support would be at about 2.5%. Your specific question, though, was where do we see rates by the end of the year? Uh, you know, based upon everything that we know about the Fed, I think the answer to that should be higher out there. And uh, that's what the charts here are suggesting to us. So I hope that that helps you out. Mimi, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. 
Uh, we did have a request as well inside the Tiger's Den to take a look at Slumber's A. SLB is the uh, ticker symbol. So let's get uh, that fired up on these white background charts. In the meantime, I'll narrate for you what it is that I see, which is that price right now is consolidating on a daily basis between support and resistance. And that's between 38.27 and 40.94. Price is also consolidating within its weekly profile, and that's between 38.59 and 44.35. And on a monthly basis, price looks very good. Price has negated a TD9 count top. Uh, I did that back in the month of uh, January. No, no topping signal out here. In fact, you've got an A to B equals CD to the upside. Although I can't really draw that in on the white background charts, I can on my other charting package here and that suggests that uh, price should go target the 5091 level that would be the one to one a to b equal city i would say more likely 5771 now that's a monthly chart this is over a period of time and that's an a to b equal cd to the upside the weekly chart last week actually confirmed a road momentum indicator top but as I mentioned, you've got a new profile that's formed out here, this new profile above the prior profile. So it's still bullish, but um, we're going to call it neutral. We're going to call it neutral until price closes above. This is the weekly chart until price closes above 4435. If it goes above that, then it's off to the races. So right now, you just got a neutral signal there, bullish signal on the monthly. Daily time frame chart shows us what? Roach momentum indicator top. Price just consolidated with inside its daily profile. If price were to close below 38.27 for two consecutive sessions, SNP, then we could look at price moving down to 33.44. So that's what the daily, the weekly, and the monthly charts for Slumberger are communicating to us. I hope that that helps you out, and thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Next question coming in from Eddie in Boca, and Eddie says, Apple earnings out Thursday. Sign off today at lower volume so far, hugging 200 day EMA. What's your analysis on Apple for the day? AAPL is a ticker symbol. Now, Apple has a confirmed A to B equals C D to the downside. I believe it did that confirmation yesterday, um, no, two days ago. So let me go ahead and let's switch back to the black background charts out here, Eddie, so uh, that we can uh, answer your question clearly. And uh, here on the daily time frame, so I think it was, was it Friday? Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, here's the daily time frame chart for Apple. And uh, the swing point that we're using for the B point is going to be the April 18th low. That had volume there was 69 million shares. And on Friday, that was passed with 84 million shares. So Apple, Eddie, has an A to B equals CD to the downside. It's one of those confirmed ones. So that is going to look like the A point out here that I'm using is the March 30th high. The B point, as we discussed, the April 18th low. The C point is the high from April 21st. The one to one price projection will get you down to 155.49. The retracement on this little bugger is only a 49% retracement. That says it's got a lot of pent up energy there. That pent up energy suggests that we should see more than a one to one A to B equals CD pattern. That suggests, for example, the 1.272, which would get you to 151.13. Well, if that's going to take place, what price is then going to do is go test its swing point for March the 14th. So you've got a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. And it looks like what price wants to do is go test that March 14th level. That's got 108 million shares. You're at 51 million shares as we speak right now. Your question or your statements were that uh, selling off today at a lower volume. Well, volume today is 51 million shares. Today's volume is, so, so to speak, um, insignificant. The volume that was significant was the one from Friday out there, which had that volume of 84 million. Yesterday was 96. You're at 51 today. So even if you're lighter volume, it doesn't matter. You've got that confirmed pattern um, as we uh, speak and play. And there is no other bottom signal. Now, at the 154 level, let me switch charts out here so you can see what we're taking a look at. The 154.46 level is a possible area of support. That is a daily TD9 count breakout area. But if price gets through that, then that's going to you know, give you more of that signal of getting down to the 151-ish type area, maybe even 145, 58. So uh, Apple looks like it wants to head lower. 
uh, because that confirmed A to B equals CD pattern. So, Eddie, I hope that that helps you out. And of course, that should then take the cues to the downside as well. So I do hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. The next question that we have, it's the final question, is uh, what's the short-term outlook for Microsoft? So in the case of Microsoft, let me uh, do this here because we just have just a few seconds. Let me just try to get back to the black screens out there. And over the break, I'll get the white ones going. Let's type up MSFT, get a feel for what it's doing here. Come on, do this. Work with me. Work with me. MSFT. And Dennis says, uh, just what's the short-term outlook? So the short-term outlook is that Microsoft is trading inside its swing point from March the 8th. That had volume out there of 48 million shares. We're at about 19 million today. It wants to go test that low. That low, by the way, is 270, even steepened. If you can test and reject it, then you might try to bust it to the upside. Now, busting it to the upside would get you into about the 283. See road with TFNN. Be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at Microsoft there and uh, our, our conclusion at this stage here from the daily standpoint is that price wants to go target the 270 level. Uh, you're down at uh, 270, 274 right now. The low of the day is 272, even Steven. Uh, you are pulling back with light volume and uh, you'd love to see that, that test 270 rejected today. 
now, if that's going to happen, you ask what's going to go, what's what's taking place in the short term time frame chart. Well, the only bottom signal that I have is from the 65 minute chart, Dennis, and that formed a TD nine count bottom at 10:35 on the trading day of uh, yesterday, and then this afternoon at 12:45 it generated a road momentum indicator bottom. So it's attempting to form a bottom. Our price has been unable to take out any kind of resistance. The first level of resistance this would need to take out, which it failed to do, was 281.96. The second level would be 287.42. If it cannot take out resistance, doesn't mean it will blow through support. But if you do see a close below 270.77, that will negate the TD9 count bottom. That will also negate the Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. And that then would say we're headed to 270. Now, we might head lower, but that would at least be the signal that you head to 270. So you're asking, what do the short-term time frame charts look like? It's really the 65 minute that is giving us the uh, best information out there. And that's the uh, time frame that I would track for Microsoft to give you your information. So we've got about uh, 30 seconds to go. We've been through, let me make sure here. Oh, we got a question that came in. David H., he wants to take a look at uh, ConocoPhillips, um, COP. So that's not going to be enough time to get those white background charts going. But we'll switch over and take a look at ConocoPhillips on the black background charts, see if we can get some type of feel for David in Tomball, Texas. Your question is buy, sell, or hold. So at this stage here, I really need those white background charts, but you're below, you've got an A to B equals CD pattern. So I take that back. What you're waiting for is some type of bullish reversal candle to confirm a Gartley sell, a Gartley buy pattern. And we don't have that as we speak just yet. So uh, you've got support. Well, support is really at 87.59 and below that, it's at 77.80. So with regard to Conical Phillips, you're looking for a bullish reversal candidate to confirm a Gertley buy pattern. David, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Everybody have a terrific Tuesday. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear is up next. We'll see you tomorrow.